So guys, we're currently just stuck, uh, just off the A1 on the way home. We've been back to my mum's for the weekend and we're about 20 minutes away from home and we've just had a turn off engine check coolant light, which as most people know, is probably not going to be good. So we pulled over um, just at the Shell garage uh, and I've opened the bonnet and this is what we've got. So as you can see, there's the maximum and the minimum line for the coolant. And there is the coolant. So we've got a massive coolant leak. You can see all in the, uh, you can see in the bottom there when it focuses. There you go. Uh, you can just see coolant everywhere. Don't quite know where it's leaking from just yet. It might be like the water pump or it might just be a pipe that's split. Um, but we're gonna have to try and do some investigation to find out because obviously that's not good. Um, so we're literally like 20 minutes away from home now. I've got no other option than to just get it home. However, um, I'm gonna, uh, I'm just gonna let the engine cool down. I'm gonna top it back up to max with some water just so it's uh, it's got something in there. And then we'll go from there. Um, yeah, it's not great, but it is what it is. So we'll uh, we'll catch up once we get home. And when I finally had chance to uh, to try and diagnose what the problem is, but it's probably gonna be a front end off job to get in there. But yeah. That's the current situation, guys. Not great, but uh, it is what it is. Anyways, it's the next day after discovering the massive water leak on the S5. So we're just doing a bit of invest. I think we seem to have found where the issue is coming from. I think it's a water pump slash thermostat. Um, it's really hard to see in there, but I'm pretty confident it's that. So I'll spin the camera around now and show you, back. I'll see if I can show you where I'm looking at and what I think it is. So I've got the car running guys, so you might not be able to hear me, but basically I'm gonna try and get it to where you can see it. So if you can just look in there, you can literally see um, coolant pool, which is from what I believe on the top of the thermostat. So I'm pretty confident that that is where our water leak is coming from. So, I think it's gonna be a thermostat and water pump change, which is quite a big job. So, yeah, let's see if we're able to do it. As I said, like thermostat and water pump on these is quite a big job. It involves taking the whole supercharger off um, we're going to have to put the front end of the Audi into service mode. It's basically like front bumper off bracket that holds the radiator and stuff onto the front end. So you can put that into service mode. It's basically unbolt it and it, you can just get a bit more room in there. It's going to be supercharger belt off. It's going to be um, the accessory belt that drives the water pump. So we might as well replace them while we're there. But yeah, it's going to be a big job, guys. So I'll come back to you once I've got the parts and we're installing them onto the Audi. So guys, this is all the parts we need to do the job. So we've got a supercharger belt, I've got the serpentine belt, which drives like all the accessory stuff in the water pump. I bought this tool just to make my life easier, it's hose clamp pliers. We've got this little um, connector pipe thing. Uh, this basically sits between the supercharger and I can't remember what, but yeah, it's a little cool pipe, so we're just gonna replace that as well. These two seals here, these go on the end of the coolant crossover pipe, which goes between the two um, two sides of the engine, between the two heads, so we're gonna change the seals on that. We've also got new intake manifold gaskets where the supercharger um, mounts onto the intake, uh, so we're gonna replace all those while we've got it off. We actually uh, I've upgraded and got the ECS tuning um, supercharger bleed screws because the ones in at the minute are plastic I believe so these are the um, upgraded metal ones by ECS so we're going to fit them we've got the thermostat most of these parts pretty much well pretty much all the parts are direct from Audi so they're all Audi OEM stuff um, so that's the thermostat uh, we've got another little o-ring seal for the coolant crossover pipe which i believe goes on the end of the pipe which fits into that bit on the thermostat just while we're changing everything we've just got a brand new um coolant bottle cap just so we know it's nice and good and then finally in the box we have the water pump so 
we'll get started stripping the car down and then we can start fitting all of the new parts. The water pump is actually located down just behind there on the front of the engine and the thermostat is mounted under this here. So basically, what do we have to do then? So we're gonna to have to strip off the intake, disconnect the coolant. We're gonna to have to drain all the coolant first as well. We're gonna remove the front bumper, um, move this top radiator cover here as well. And we're gonna basically put the front end into what's called service mode. Uh, all that does is basically just give us a little bit more room to get tools and our hands and stuff down here. It just makes life a hell of a lot easier. Uh, once we've got the kind of service mode at the front, can then start working on the supercharger so it's basically there's a load of pipes and stuff here that we're gonna have to disconnect at the back um coolant pipe here coolant pipe here and then there's six um nuts on the top here which hold the supercharger down so we're gonna have to remove those and then i think there's just a, a lot of electrical connectors and sensors and stuff at the back so once that's removed we can then pull the supercharger out before we do that we need to remove the belt so there's a tensioner just down there and then yeah supercharger off uh, we need to loosen off the coolant crossover pipe um, which is uh, down there somewhere can't quite see it at the minute but we need to move that off so we can pull that out get the thermostat out replace the seals and then we can change the water pump and then we can put it all back together so this is definitely going to be the biggest job that I've ever attempted um, we're just going to have to wait and see how it goes. I'm hoping it should be fairly straightforward. There's a, video, a really good tutorial video on YouTube, actually, of how to do this. So we're just going to give it a go, document the process, and see how we get on. So first of all, I'm going to start with getting the front bumper ready to come off, and then we'll go from there. All right, guys, so we're making progress. So we'll just go under the car dead quick. So we can see here, we've just got the under tray bolts off. Not all the ones like right at the back, but I think I can probably just leave it like that hanging down because we don't need to get there. But you can see, look at all that lovely red coolant, which is just pooling on the under tray. So yeah, really big coolant leak. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start getting the front bumper off. Like I said, I've pretty much got all of the, um, the bolts from the underneath off. So now what we just need to do is get this top cover off here and then once we've done that we can get the two bolts that are under here and the bumper should come off so let's do that now. Here we are we can now finally see what is going on. I can see all the coolant is going absolutely everywhere so yeah we're going to give this a really good clean out get all these leaves out and then we can see what we're doing but yeah there's well you just see the coolant everywhere so yeah um at some point we are going to be upgrading this so this is the heat exchange on the front um i was really tempted to do it whilst i've got all this off and doing the coolant system but i mean they're not cheap if you know they're like probably like anywhere from 600 to a thousand pounds so yeah a lot of money and it's just cost me money to obviously get all the parts through this so we'll save that for another time but for now, we're just going to get to disconnecting the coolant and then we can start to drain all the coolant out of the system. Right, so coolant's all drained. Next, we're going to try and put the car into service mode, which is where we bring this front end forward. I've disconnected this from the coolant reservoir already, so basically I've got a little pick under this, pops it up and then basically just pulls off, so that's nice and easy. Next, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the headlights on both sides, then start undoing the front bumper. I think there might be as well. Yeah, so this little, uh, I'm trying to focus in. This one here, I think we need to remove, and then there's another one on the other side, I think they're um, T30s. So we're gonna do that and then we'll come back to you once we've got the car ready to pull into service mode. So I forgot to mention actually, so to actually put the car in service mode, we need to remove these big, um, a little focus just in there. Yeah, see, I think there's 16 mils, I think. And then there's one and two there on both sides. Basically it just holds the crash bar on. So we're gonna remove those and then that'll allow us to bring the front end forward. I think that is service mode as it's called guys so we can just have a quick look so it just gives us a little bit more room it just gives us a little bit more room to get down um, with tools and we've got plenty of hand space there now so 
what we're going to do now we're going to start removing the intake and then we'll come back once we've got that off and then we'll kind of run through what we're going to disconnect for the supercharger to get that off so guys before we actually um, remove anything else what we're going to do is we're just going to loosen off while there's tension on the belt um, we're going to loosen off the bolts on the water pump pulley which is this one just in here um, so you can see there's three bolts there they are a um i think it's an m10 uh like 12 pointed um star so we're just going to get in there loosen them off and then we can start removing things oh so we've got the intake off now uh, i'm not going to take out the heat shield and the cone because i'm not saying that actually that could probably do with a clean so i might actually get that on clean it what I am going to do though, um, which I will do now, is I'm going to get some um, like kitchen roll, uh, scrunch it up into a ball, and then I'm just going to stuff it into the throttle body. Basically, it'll just act as a bit of a, a block to make sure nothing falls in there. We don't want anything falling into the throttle body. And then the next thing we're going to do is we are going to, let's get the torch so we can see, um, we're going to take off the supercharger belt, which is this one right here. And if we can sort of just see if the camera will focus, uh, just there, and all we're going to do is turn it clockwise or put pressure on it clockwise, and then that'll take the tension off the belt, um, and then we can disconnect the supercharger belt. So we're just going to take note and take a picture in a second of how the belt goes on. It's pretty straightforward, but we're just going to make notes. Then when we come to refit it later, um, we don't end up fitting it wrong. We've had an injury guys, we have had an injury. So the spanner slipped off and I've kind of just sliced my thumb. Um, yeah, that's pretty sore. Uh, so yeah, just be careful when you are taking off the, uh, when you are taking off the tension off the uh, supercharger belt, uh, make sure your spanner is on properly because like I said, I have just now sliced my thumb open, which is not great. So I'm gonna go and just get this cleaned up and then we'll get back to it. So we're back guys. Um, yeah, like I said, I've just kind of taken all the skin off my thumb. We're all, uh, we're all patched up now, so hopefully we can just crack on. Um, like I said, it did take the skin off, which sucks. But yeah, just be careful. <laughs> Right guys, update time. We made quite a lot of progress off camera just because it's, it's quite hard to film and it is quite in depth and I think I've just looked at the clock and I'm like at least two and a bit hours into the job now and we've still not even got the supercharger off. Like this is a long job so if you're going to try and do it yourself make sure you put away plenty of time. But where are we at? Right okay so these two coolant pipes here which go to either side of the supercharger so you can see here we've just disconnected those. On that bracket there there's a T30 that if you remove that it just allows you to get a bit more play on these pipes there is six nuts that hold on the supercharger so we've undone all of those six uh, nuts they're 13 mil I believe what else have we done sensor here on the side we've also done a another sensor here we also disconnected all of the throttle um, I've just taped up any pipes that I've disconnected just so I can see them and put them back on later. Uh, this blue pipe here, this is for the valve system on the exhaust, so obviously if you've not got that then you um, you won't have that particular pipe, but I've just disconnected that. Um, there's a load of electrical connectors down there, these vacuum lines I think. Um, so I've disconnected all these as well. Uh, disconnected this from what I believe is the throttle potentially. I've put throttle valve, so that's what it is now. Um, so I think we're pretty much ready to try and lift the supercharger up. So guys, update, the supercharger is off. Um, I had to get somebody else to come and help me get it off because it was quite heavy. And the reason I couldn't get it off was because we missed uh, one thing that we didn't disconnect. But there you go, there's the supercharger off. Um, here is that little pipe that I said connected to the supercharger. This is the one that was fitted previously. Um, it just literally goes into this gap uh, there it sits in like that so I'm gonna replace that now uh, as the first thing just while we've got it off so I'll get the new one out of the packet and we'll fit that so after we replace that pipe we then removed the water pump pulley this was held on by these three bolts and then we went on to remove the belt so this one's the tensioner so we take the tension off and then this pulley here we needed to remove to get the belt off 
Then we went on to the coolant crossover pipe. This one was held on by a few bolts here, which also hold the thermostat on. And then either end, there is two bolts which hold it to the actual engine. So we removed these to get better access, movement in the pipe, and then replace the seals. So guys, I've got some bad news. Um, it was all going so well. We was making good progress, um, but Audi have sent me the wrong thermostat, basically. So obviously, with this being the newer B8.5 Crack engine, they've sent me the thermostat for the older engine. So as you can see, it's got like this little extra pipe thing on top here, which goes to the crossover pipe. Um, whereas I'll flip the camera around and on this engine, that pipe, which would normally be sort of here, is not there. Um, so it, it won't fit basically. So I've just ordered another thermostat, costing me another 40 quid. This time I've just, I've not got it through Audi Direct. Um, I've just bought it online. So hopefully that doesn't take too long to come. However, we are in a bit of a, pickle now because obviously I can't start the car and my error I didn't when I pulled it up onto the blocks I basically pulled it too far and now I can't shut the garage either um, which is not great I'm staying positive all is not lost we can still fit some other stuff so we can still change the water pump because we've got access to all the bolts so I'm gonna change the water pump now um, and then I'm gonna just do the hopefully try and do the seals uh, the new seals of their right on the coolant crossover pipe and then we're just going to start kind of plugging some things back in just so I don't forget where everything goes. But yeah, frustrating, but it is what it is. I'm just going to crack on and do that now and then we'll check back in, hopefully once we've got the new part. The new one, this is the old one. However, the ass, again, just my look, they are slightly different. They are both from Audi, but I don't know, maybe I give them the wrong part, part number, I don't really know. But So they, they pretty much look identical. The only difference is on the new one, it doesn't have this like weird cover on the impeller. Um, but you know what, I don't think it's going to make that much difference, so the part numbers are near enough identical, it's just that one's 018 on the end, and then that one's 016, but I'm going to fit it, so basically it just fits straight on the front of the engine there, and there's a little vacuum line uh, that just plums onto this little nozzle thing here, so I'm going to go fit that, and then yeah, we'll see where we're at after that. Sit rep, it's now like half past five, nearly six o'clock. So I've literally been going at this for like six hours now. Um, so we've just managed to finally get those seals in place for the coolant crossover pipe. Um, that's really like difficult to move out of the way to get to the thermostat. So I'm gonna have to try and like tackle that when we actually get the proper thermostat. Um, but we've got them seals on, so I'm happy with that. We're now just gonna go and do the intake manifold gaskets, which are these, uh, these green ones here around the intake manifold. So we're gonna just change those while we have all this kind of out and we can't really do anything else. Um, and then we can actually we can actually put the, um, I think we can put the water pump belt back on and uh, the pulley and the belt because I don't believe that needs to be off to get the uh, the thermostat out. Like I said, this, like, this is all loose now, but it's, it's pretty difficult to get to the thermostat. So I'm gonna have to try and figure that one out, but. That's the current situation. We're gonna do those intake manifold gaskets and then see where we are. So last update before we finish up for today because I literally can't do anything else. Um, I've replaced all of these intake manifold gaskets now. Obviously we did the little pipe, I can't remember the name of it before. So that's done. We have managed to get the cross coolant crossover pipe freed. If you look just in there, you can see we've actually kind of disconnected. Um, We've disconnected the coolant crossover pipe from the uh, silicon hose there. So that's allowed us to now actually access all of the bolts for the thermostat. Obviously we've got the wrong thermostat. So we'll have to uh, just replace that once we get the new one. I'm hoping it'll be only a couple of days. Um, we've put the water pump pulley back on. However, it's not torqued down yet. So that needs to be done. But obviously it just spins at the moment. So we'll have to wait. So yeah, we're gonna have to wait to uh, torque that down until the belt's on and it's got under tension. I'm not gonna put the belt on just yet, um, just because like I'm moving that crossover pipe and I don't know whether I'm gonna have to take the uh, pulley off again. But that's where we're at at the minute. I took the intake out fully just so I got more room. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do a quick kind of video for myself walking around the engine 
and making note of every single connector that's still disconnected so when I come to put it all back together I can make sure that everything's plug plugged back in. 16 paranoia filled days later. Right guys so we're back I'm not quite sure where we left off the kind of first part of this video it's like six days later now because obviously as I said in the first part I already submitted the wrong thermostat they sent it for the previous version of this engine obviously this is the crack engine which is the newer version We've got the new part finally, like I said, it's like six days later now, which is inconvenient, but it is what it is. So we're gonna carry on, like I said, I'm not quite sure where we left off. This is the state of the engines at the minute. I hope I remember where everything goes. Um, I'm sure I will do, because I kind of labeled everything up. But essentially, all we need to do now is we need to get the old um, thermostat out. Once we've got the old thermostat out, we can then put the new one in, tie everything down, talk everything up. We can put the belts back on, supercharger back on, start plugging everything back in, and then we can fill it with coolant and then bleed the coolant system and hopefully we're all good. So I'm just gonna crack on. I'm not gonna probably film too much of this actually because I like it's what time is it now? It's half past five in the evening and it's lights about half nine, so I've got four hours of light before it starts going dark. I really, really want to get this done and finished tonight. So I'm gonna probably just speed through it as quick as I can and I'll update you as I go and when I can. So we're making good progress guys. We've just got the serpentine belt back on. So I'll show you that now. I'll just get the torch so we can see. So there you go, belt's back on. Um, it took me a little minute to figure out and let's try and find a diagram again of um, how it goes on, but you can see there. So we've tightened all this up. So this pulley that we took off before to get the belt off, that's been put back on. That's tightened to 40 newton meters. And then we've taught the, um, the water pump pulley to 20 newton meters on each of those bolts. I think now guys, we are literally ready to start putting it back together. So the next step is to get the supercharger back on, which is gonna be a pain. So we might need a bit of help just to keep all of these wires and stuff out of the way. Once we've got that back on, it's literally just gonna be plugging stuff in and getting ourselves in a position, ready to uh, fill the coolant, check for any leaks and bleed the system. So I'm gonna do all that off camera and then we'll check back in. We are getting there. We've got the supercharger belt on. Wow, guys, that was a pain in the ass. Like, it's such a tight belt, like, it's so much tension. It took me a good like 15, 20 minutes to just try and wiggle it over. So I opted for like going around these bottom three pulleys, like around the tensioner, and then just trying to squeeze it over the supercharger pulley there. But it worked, we're good. So I think we've connected everything up now. So we just need to start like putting everything else back together, intake, etc., And then we should be good to start filling her up. Right guys, I'll be completely honest, I have no idea where I left off with the other part of this video when I was doing it last night. I kind of, it got really late, it started to get dark, I just wanted to get it sorted so I could just kind of put the camera down and just cracked on with the car. But, good news, car started, it hasn't got any engine warning lights or anything like that. I'll show you the dash, so there you go, obviously the bonnet's open, that's why that's open. Um, yeah, no warning lights, if you look there, it's at temperature and it's staying at temperature. It's not overheating or anything. Um, we're not losing coolant now. So I left it running last night for a bit. I took it for a little drive. Um, and it was a little bit smoky. And I think that was just some of the like coolant that I dripped was burning off. It doesn't seem to be smoking now, which is good. I've just topped the coolant back off to max. Um, it's gone a little bit above max now it's running. But as you can see, if we look sort of like down there, a little focus uh, there's no wet patch anymore like there was before no coolant we look like around where the thermostat is and the water pump it's not wet anymore there's no coolant all the belts are spinning fine I think we managed to do it so I'm actually really really pleased because I probably just saved myself the best part of about 350 pounds 450 pounds in labor getting somebody else to do it um, and this is why we try things ourselves guys because it looks like a big job and it was a big job and it was quite difficult and I've got so many cuts I've just cut myself again I've got so many cuts and scars from trying to do this but this sense of kind of satisfaction that I've got at the end knowing that I've just done that myself on it's not even like it's a cheap car like I don't mind messing around with cheap cars so if they break it's thingy but this is it's, it's an expensive car um, and we've done it and it's running. So I'm just gonna go out for a quick drive now and make sure everything's absolutely sweet. We've got the S5 fixed, the water pump and thermostat and loads of seals are changed. Yeah, no more water leak, hopefully, fingers crossed. I'm sure I'll give you an update in maybe a future video to see how it all went, but 
yeah that's going to be it for this one guys if you did like the video please 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 remember to hit that like button please hit the subscribe button i would really really appreciate it and hit the bell icon as well so you don't miss out on any of the latest videos and until next time guys we'll see you then